I know, Allison. So, Good morning. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Proactive Health Collective of Keene. It looks like uh, there's just two of us for now. I think we'll probably have some others joining us. We're Maybe the dynamic we'll duo, Gene. We're the dynamic duo, Dr. Jean. Um, I live for this. I live you know, for this. So we can do this. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, looking forward to sharing an hour again with people to uh, talk about our health. And uh, I always enjoy it, even just for being able to talk with my colleagues and get a, get a, a time every two weeks to uh, kind of learn what they're up to and, and their ideas about different things. And I'm always, always learning from them. So I am Rebecca Montrone, Becky Montrone of Wondrous Roots. I'm a holistic health practitioner with a degree in holistic nutrition, and I'm also an herbalist. And I have a practice here called Wondrous Roots in Keene at the Miller Forge building. Dr. Jean, introduce yourself. I, I'm streaming. I'm, I'm getting my uh, Facebook oh, okay. uh, stream set it. up there, but no, I, I, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jean Clerkin, I'm... Uh, Director at Monadnock Natural Health, we're uh, mostly a functional nutrition practice, um, and we work with wellness programs with people. And you know, I do I as well. Always get a whole lot out of these discussions and get different perspectives and different thoughts. So um, I always appreciate that. So what we're, we're talking, what we're talking about, uh, what are we talking about today? We, was we, we thought we you had it really well said. You said um, how. The relationship between consciousness and spirituality and health and wellness. Right. That's how right. I think it. a lot of times we get on the, the biochemical trail, you know, of this hormone or this toxicity or, you know, this herb or supplement. And they, these are all good tools. Obviously, we both use these tools, right? Um, but there, there's, always, there's always another aspect, I think. Um, I don't know, like, you know, when I was, I was, struggling with my health for a long time. And, and I was looking for the answer, like what was the thing that caused this problem? And I'm not sure I ever found it. You know, I found yeah. a number of things though. And, you know, I think, again, there was toxicity, there's stealth pathogens, there's stress and all that. Um, but there's also like your past, your childhood, you know, I, I, um, I didn't really have time to get into pulling up any studies, but I know I've read studies where, um, you know, people who've had like traumatic childhoods are much more likely to have autoimmune disease and that kind of stuff. So we know that um, our mental, emotional, and even spiritual, um, you know, aspects of us definitely play into our health as well. So. And that's certainly holistic. I mean, we are body, mind, spirit. We are uh, not one dimensional. And right. so I like what you said, because yeah, we can use uh, things. We have tools in our toolkits we use all the time to help improve people's health. And it's thrilling and wonderful when we're able to do that. And it's fantastic. But uh, we know that our attitude and how we think, and you know, I have like, personally, I have a strong, strong trust in God. And so mm -hmm. I see the world going to hell in a handbasket here. I mean, we're in a crazy world, but I have great peace inside so that helps maintain my health right yeah for sure because if i'm freaked out about this it's going to wear down my right. health physical health it just is there's no way that's right. not gonna you know well, part of um oh my gosh there's so much to uncan here first of all um there there when you look at wellness okay and wellness includes these other aspects of our mental, emotional place and our spirituality and our purpose in life and our community, right? That's wellness. Health, typically, although health does really truly expand into those things, but typically in our culture, health is like, well, I, you know, it's what's my biochemistry, what's happening in my biochemistry. And in yeah. wellness, we, we're sort of expanding upon that and saying, hey, you know, all of this other stuff matters too. Um, and oh, we got Allison on with us. Welcome, Allison. Thanks. Yeah, we're right. just we're just getting into this uh, topic here yeah, today. Yeah. That's a cool topic. I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. So, just in case you know uh, somebody is listening who doesn't know you, just give your 
itself a brief introduc introduction and it's great to see you. Yeah, great to see you guys too. My name is Allison. I'm a licensed acupuncturist and practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine. And I run a health clinic here in Keene. It's called Basic Balance and it's right across the street from the library. We treat all types of basically what acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine do is help the body heal itself faster. And so we treat all types of things from pain conditions to sleep issues to menopause and menstrual cramps and you name it. We get a wide range of things to help the body heal itself, just like you guys do. Yeah. I think that's one thing about all of us, uh, even uh, Matt and Tisa, and I don't know if we're going to see Matt and Tisa um, on this, co on this uh, webinar today, but uh, I think that's the thing about all of us is that we, we see people with all different things, like right. you name it. It's not like people come to me for one particular thing or go to either of you for one particular thing. So we, we have a lot of experience with many, many different health conditions. And I certainly find that working with people with all those different things is really my best education because yeah. I have to figure, I have to learn, I have to learn in order to be able to help them. You know? And you see a lot of overlap in terms of what's going on under the surface. Cause you can have so many symptoms that are similar across a broad range of people, but identify the same kind of underlying things that keep coming up. Like Dr. Jean yeah. always talks about gut health is a huge one and it yeah. can manifest in so many different ways. And right. I think, you know, I've always kind of had the idea that there's so many windows into the body, you know, so many ways that you can affect change and that might just, you know, whatever it is can be enough to just get the momentum moving in the right direction. That can be, you know, open up the energy channels, you know, the, in, in the meridians like you do. Um, or introducing, you know, some kind of an herb or something to help the body overcome something or, you know, I mean, truly like when people come to see me, I'm sure it's the same as the way you guys do it. It, yeah, their symptoms matter and it helps you kind of put the picture together. But ultimately at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is create health as opposed to fight disease, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a whole profession that does that and they try to squash down disease and there's a time and a place for that for sure. And so the perspective here is like, well, you know, no matter what else happens, you can always build health, no matter where you are, what's going on. We know that building health is going to be a positive thing. And, you know, there's obviously many aspects to that and, and a lot of different windows and avenues for people. Um, yeah. But you well, can't go wrong, right? You can't go wrong. If, you, if your energy is flowing better, you're going to be better off. It doesn't matter. Like I, I can honestly tell people like when I'm working, it's like, well, listen, I don't know if all your symptoms are going to go away or not or whatever, but I can tell you with certainty, if we get your body detoxified, if we get, you know, all these different things working right and you eating better and all these different things happen, it worked like hundred percent of the time it worked. You got, you got improvement in your health. And you know, many times yeah. that means an improvement in the symptoms as well. But um, it's yeah. great to be able to do something that you win, you win all the time, you know? Yeah. So many people will say like, thank you so much. You've helped, you've helped me so much or, you know, like you, you fixed this thing for me. I'm like, no, I, I did. I really didn't. Like I, I just put needles in a place and gave your body like a suggestion and your body ran with it and you healed yourself like one hour a week or even two sessions at two hours a week. Like it's your body doing the work, you know, it's uh, our body. I think we really lose sight as a culture that our bodies do have the power and that there's so many things you can do to just give them little nudges in the right direction. And then they know exactly what to do with it. Yeah. And I think, one of the things that we're talking about today is the power that our thought, our thoughts and our, our, while we're talking about things that are consciousness, faith, spirituality, how, uh, how we think there's a, there's a proverb that says, as a man thinks, um, so he is. And so we know, I mean, scientific studies have shown that, um, a positive outlook, even right. A positive optimistic outlook strengthens the body because it does actually cause changes within our biochemistry that uh, that's how actually placebo medicine works okay placebo can work um, 
And some people don't like that. It doesn't mean that, that using something, if everything is just a placebo effect, but when you actually do believe that something is going to work for you, it gives you this confidence and something that actually does help. It helps. You know, it's um, funny you say that. I used to have people, you know, I'd work on them and they'd get better or feel better or whatever. And they'd say, well, I don't know, maybe it's placebo effect. And I'd say, so what? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> like, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Like, your end goal was reached. It doesn't, if it was placebo, so be it, you know? And then yeah. you were able to get that, you know, if you could go get a prescription for placebo and take it, then awesome. Another <laughs> More power one to you, right? Like, I think like they get up and they're surprised. I think it, I think it feels better, but it's probably all in my head. Like, isn't everything <laughs> in your head all the time? Like, Right. Yeah. I mean, you do. That's where you perceive your pain and whatever's going on. It's in your oh, head. Right? Yeah, and always. Yeah. So, I, mean, I don't know. One of the things that, go ahead, one go ahead. Things that made me think about, you know, like this subject is like I've had many, you know, I've been in practice for about 27 years. So I have had many um, seen it all really, you know, in one way or the other. And one of the things I've noticed is that when people um, are, are not stable or don't have um or aren't grounded in life, uh, for instance, like they hate their job or they hate their spouse or something like that. It's really challenging to help them, you know, get their physical body in shape. It seems like you can never really get there. There's always some other hole popping out or something that that's going on. It's like a never ending battle. So I think, you know, in, in my experience, it's important to be able to look at the bigger picture. And it might not mean you can help that person, but it certainly means it's, from a holistic standpoint, you want to look at the big picture and understand that, um, you know, as great as acupuncture and herbs and supplements and repairing the gut is, I don't think it can overcome, um, you know, when you're in a, a mental, emotional, you know, overload or constant stress. And, you know, there's so many wormholes we could go down here. Just stress alone from a chemical standpoint, obviously, is, you know, it's yeah. natural, but it's a short-term mechanism. When it becomes a long-term mechanism, there's a number of different levels where that throws you off. Yeah. But even beyond that, you know, like you were talking, we were talking earlier offline, uh, just, you know, in spirituality. Um, I don't know, when I was talking about wellness, you know, like if you're in fear of your health, if you're afraid to go outside, that's a lack of wellness, right? It's all kind of tied in together. And it, and it certainly would push you the propensity to, to um, get, have those things happen to you. I mean, you know, I don't know if any of you have been into quantum physics at all, but, you know, basically quantum physics supports the idea that we create our reality. And of course, many spiritual, spiritual teachings and religions do as well. So, yeah. And, and, you know, I would say quantum physics, you know, works and is, is reality because of the creator, you know, who, I'm, I feel I'm connected with, you know, in a spiritual way. And that's my grounding. So it's like um, being, I, I think having a, a healthy spiritual life is just so important because you see a much bigger picture too. Don't you think so? You look at things from a much broader standpoint than just what's right in your face. Um, like, the things that kind of stress me out are all of these people who want me to return phone calls and I, I haven't, you know, haven't done that, but that's like nothing, right? That's not like, and, and I see that our world is in a mess and we have no idea what's coming the next day, but I don't have worry about that. I have concern and, and everybody knows I do. Otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it as much as I do and standing up and, and making statements about those things. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I put my head down on the pillow and I'm at peace. And I think uh, a lot of people are, are missing that today. I think um, that's a really important distinction concerning like your concerns versus worrying. Yes. So two very different thought processes there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think um, it, it, it kind of comes to awareness. You also kind of mentioned that in what you just said, Becky, as well there's an awareness there, you know, like when you're too, when you're connected to your being, to God, really, 
you have, there's like what goes on in your head. That's like your intellectual thought. And all of your intellectual thoughts are things that have been given to you that you read somewhere that somebody told you and you believe it or you don't believe it. Like how much do we really know? Right. We believe a lot of people will believe we went to the moon, but we, we don't really know. We just, somebody showed us pictures and stuff like that. And we said, okay, we believe that. And whether we did or we didn't, um, the point here is that there's also another way that we get information. And that is, you know, some people would say through your heart and, and God speaks to you through your heart. Right. And, and these are our knowings. And I know most people are listening have had that experience where you yeah. just knew it was beyond the, the back and forth in your head because you can never trust your head. Right. That's where stress comes from. It's like, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I. And, but you can always go to your heart, which is like, you know, to me, that's what your spirituality is. It's when you totally let go of the mind stuff and you can connect. And, um, and I think, you know, like I was talking about with my songs that I write that they're, they're sort of downloaded. They just come through me. Really, I know they're great. Not, some, not something that I sat down and said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try to create that. Um, so I think there's, you know, a distinction to be made there. Like what you were saying, Allison, with, you know, there's this intellectual kind of, fear or not but then there's also a connection to who you are and there and that's and you're totally grounded there like when you're there you are safe you you're not it's more powerful than the mind stuff that goes on that um that can hold us back and you know cause limitations i think it takes, My, oh go ahead yeah. yeah real quick i think it takes a real conscious effort to put yourself to get into that sort of more receptive heart area where you're open to that inner wisdom because the more stressed you get the more active the mind becomes it's a protective mechanism for survival and so i think one of the it's unfortunate that we're not taught this in school like how to breathe or how to become aware but the importance of just not trusting the mind and not believing that the best thing to do is to cross everything off your to-do list as soon as possible, but maybe to take a minute and kind of sink into the different, into the heart area, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know that um, when, the, when the brain is going, when you're in stress physiology, it mutes the signals of the heart, right? Yeah. Because if you think about it, you know, like the stress mechanism, again, totally God-given, built-in, um, totally need for it. And so there's a time in life for being in survival mode, you know, like, oh my gosh, I'm about to get attacked. It's not really time to be going to the place of like, oh, wow, I wonder what their socioeconomic background is. And, you know, all the big picture kind of stuff. You're like, oh my God, I got to survive. And, you know, we shut off from our humanity in that moment, right? We're just trying to get by. Mm -hmm. um, and then the pro I just think the problem that we're experiencing collectively is that when we're everybody's in that mode, they become more disconnected from their heart. And then we have less heart centered solutions and connections with people. And, um, and we have more fear based things like, oh my gosh, I got to run out and take, for instance, like an experimental shot because I'm in fear. Whereas, you know, if you're like Becky, maybe you just have more trust in yourself then maybe you don't have to make that decision or you make a different decision based on you know not your fear but your your knowings or your wisdoms your inner wisdoms i don't you think there's a lot of uh, a, a place here to talk about intuition um there's that intuitive kind of thing and i think as uh people who are in the healing arts i think intuition is really really key uh i think the combination of knowledge and intuition. My father and I were having this conversation oh, years ago. We were at the lake out on the deck and he was like, um, you know, my, what makes us think the way we do? And I said, you know, we're, we're, we're German and Irish and the German are very analytical and the Irish are very intuitive. And I don't know, but I do think, I do think the best healers, if you want to call people healers, but the people with the best healing art, I think have a combination of both. And I think you know, your intuition and, and your passion for people. I mean, when I sit down with somebody, and I'm sure it's the same with you too, um, when, you, when you're with people, you, you get the wonder of another person. And as they open up to you, you 
it, it's a connection. Somebody said to me the other day, aren't you overwhelmed? You're, you have so many sick people you're working with. And I said, I'm not, again, I get overwhelmed with, I didn't call this person back yet. Um, that, that's totally different, but I'm not overwhelmed by um, the enormity or the seriousness of somebody's situation because I'm not the answer. I'm just on the road. I'm on their road somewhere, but it's not up to me. It's not on my shoulders. The whole weight of this is because it's not about me. That exalts me to a higher place that I don't have if I think it's all about me. So I can do what I can do. You know, I pray for wisdom, for you know, understanding, and um, you know, showing me, learning more about something that will help somebody. But it, it, at the end of the day, it's not the whole big picture for that person is not on, on me. So I feel a, a rest in that too. Yeah, I've, I love the days where I don't have any office work stuff I have to do and I can just show up and like just treat patients. And I'm just like, I'm so relaxed all day long. It's so nice. Even if I, can't I, remember, I can't remember that day. I, remember that day. <laughs> I, know. I know, me too, it's been a while. But it, yeah, if you can get, you know, if you even just get in the mindset, like today I've, I've been doing too much office work and I'm not, I'm just done with it today and I'm not going to worry about it. And then you're just going to just be with your patients. And it's, yeah, totally. It's so you got to definitely compartmentalize and put that stuff in a different corner. You know, when I was, um, my, I'd give you a little kind of story about my I mean, I've had a lot of different aspects of my spiritual journey, but, um, you know, I was raised, at, you went to church, Catholic, whatever, and, you know, did the whole thing that you just do because it's obligatory to do. And I don't know, when I got into like high school and college, I sort of drifted away and just was more into, you know, drinking beer and doing college stuff like that. And um, I remember in, I was in chiropractic school and we were working on cadavers and I'm in there, you know, elbow deep into these cadavers. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, this is like amazing. And I just, I had the thought that this isn't, this is like not just a random thing because like if the blood vessel can't go there, it makes a turnaround and goes another way. Like I just felt, I was just like, for me, it was like an awakening, it was a spiritual awakening, really realizing and understanding how amazing the body was. And then it sort of expanded like, wow, looking at nature and how everything fits together. And I just came to the conclusion, at least in my mind, that um, that this isn't all just random. And that for me was like my first sort of um, self-aware and, you know, I don't know, self-directed thought awakening. back into, like yeah, into, yeah, even though like I was raised, you know, like and yeah. learning all the things you're supposed to learn. But for me, that was my first like life, like real life experience where I kind of felt that. And then I've had many more after that, um, you know, from that moment on, um, we, I we go to these seminars, they're called uh, gates, Matt and TC would know about this and um, where everybody's getting worked on over the weekend in the room and it, and it creates like an energy soup and it really like pushes you to that level of connection with people. And I, I remember, you go in on a Friday and you like, you're looking around and there's, you know, several hundred people in the, in the ballroom and you're kind of looking around and it's like our automatic, um, we automatically start judging people, you know, not in a necessary bad way, but just like, Oh, he's tall. She's short. He's fat. She's skinny. And, you know, like we just start taking an inventory making judgments. And again, that's all your mind stuff, right? Your mind taking an inventory. And at the end of the weekend, you're looking around and it's like, Oh my gosh, everybody looks beautiful. Like, that's all you can think. Like, when you really get connected, like, you get away from all that mind stuff, you get connected to who you really are. And then all of a sudden, now you see the beauty in everything else around you. And I guess my whole point in saying this is that in that state, you know, like, you're, you're much more likely to have a good biochemistry and other things from that place than you are from your judgment place. Mm. Very well said. Yeah. Totally. It's, agree. It's, it's it's experience that is similar. So I hear to like people with like psychedelic experiences and 
um, different plant medicines that you can work with. And you hear like everything sort of becomes one and there's, it kind of gets rid of the boundaries so you can uh, not get out of the mind. You know, the mind's not running the show anymore. And what it's like channeling something from a very deep level. That's something very different, mm -hmm. which is cool. It's cool to think how the mind creates our reality. Like how, like the visual waves that come in, our brain actually has to flip them over and make them like right side up. So yeah, it, there's, I was, I like watched some YouTube videos on this. Like, it's just fascinating. I don't even know if it's quantum physics, but it's just types of physics, but how the mind, like what it needs to do to hear sound and like to process things in the environment. Uh, if you didn't have all of these like features um, in your brain, the world would be like, you wouldn't, it would just be waves and signals. And so you really are interpreting everything just because of the ad adaptive systems that we have in place for survival. But if you get rid of all of that, it's just this like soup of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to learn yeah. more about that. I feel like I, used to... here. I feel like he would have a lot to say about that. Yeah, I know. I wish he was here as well or he, Matt and Tisa. But um, I, I used to, you know, there was a time in my life where I would, you know, listen to different people and I was into Wayne Dyer for a while listening to a lot of his stuff and he would talk about this you know shift in consciousness and you know it could go one way or the other you know at the time he was talking about like AIDS and how this you know when everybody became afraid it became this big thing now like do you hear of AIDS anymore it's still around but you don't like it's shifted out of our consciousness right for most people and, and we're on to other <laughs> viruses and things to, to worry about I guess um but have you, you've, have you all like the hundredth monkey effect? No, you what's that? that? No. So apparently they would, um, you know, take these like sweet potatoes and soil them and make them so that, you know, the, the monkeys, they did this on a particular island, would have to figure out how to clean, you know, clean it off and then to be able to eat it. Um, and essentially, you know, they did this on this island and there was an island like hundreds of miles away. And when these monkeys began to got to the point where they learned this and they understood what to do that automatically far away that these other monkeys automatically knew how to do this too. So there's like a consciousness connection there. Yeah. Um, and so the idea here is that, you know, like, like when we need a shift in humanity, so you could say right now, yeah, we need a shift in and where we're at, like something, things aren't really working right, but it doesn't take 51% or 60%. It, it only takes like 10% to get that shift or that momentum in consciousness that it, then, then becomes like, goes through like a wave to the rest of wow. you know, cool. humanity. So that always gives me hope, you know, it's like when you think it's like hopeless, you know, cause there's so much the other way or so much that isn't right or, you know, that, could be improved um, when you kind of understand that, oh, it doesn't take, we don't have to get everybody awake and conscious. We just have to get 10% you know, people where we're at now, five, six percent, <laughs> maybe. Well, and that's what I think has been really uh, a silver lining in all of this um, stuff over the last year and a half is our, um, the way it's brought us together. I mean, really, that was the catalyst to really bring you well, you Jean, you were the one who wanted to start Proactive Health Collective with Keen, right when this happened, and it's brought it's it's that law of attraction. I mean, so many people have been brought together in community. Uh, if it were not for this, we wouldn't know one another. And I'm not saying that that justifies the whole thing, but there's always cool things that happen, and we found our voice, and people are. Are, are standing up and they're speaking out and they're making a difference. And there are things that are kind of taking, taking the powers that be by surprise because they were just expecting people to continue to lie down and not speak up and not make a difference and not come together and not find strength. So I think uh, what you're saying is right. We don't have to convince everyone, but we do need each other 
and uh, we find that strength uh, coming together. Uh, and we all yeah. come from different. We all come from different perspectives. We don't all have the same political views. We don't all have the same spiritual views. We don't all have the same thing. But we are coming together around this idea of um, medical freedom and and everything that's happening and yeah, you know, uh, making a difference. That you mentioned this, um, you know, community, you know, like silver lining here. One of the things that, that Cassie and I were talking about, and this was, um, you know, up to two years ago, like we really were, were wanting to create more community and connection, deeper connection. We had like some friends and stuff, but it wasn't a real like depth of connection there. And um, this whole situation, what for us and our family, what it's brought about is a lot more depth and connection with a lot like our community, our personal community has grown tremendously in the last yeah. 18 months because, you know, kind of like you said, well, we, we've connected with a lot of people who are, um, you know, awake to, to things that are going on and you find that common connection with people. I think that's an important thing. And, um, you know, again, yeah. the silver lining. And, and, you know, speaking about, you know, going back to the concept that we're talking about here today is like, you, you know, I look back at my life, all the things and all the hardships that I've experienced, there's always a lesson. There's always a growth. And, you know, this is part of like, this is really a spiritual concept that in my mind, if everything that happens to you is you're the victim of it, then <clears throat> you don't get any growth out of that. And you get more of the same lesson. But if you can kind of step back and say, okay, well, this was hard. This relationship was hard. This sickness was hard, whatever it is. And then you could look at it and say, well, what did I, what did I get from that? How did I grow? How did I become a different person? Um, then, you know, that's what we're here for. Right. I think anyway, that's my perception yes. is that we're here to grow and become um, a higher level of spirituality. And we get these opportunities. And I and think, I, I think it's, of purpose. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't live with purpose. I feel like I, I am, I am very connected to God and I'm like, I have a purpose. I have a purpose today. And I don't know exactly what, what that's going to be, who that involves or whatever, but I feel that I'm, I'm living in this time for a reason. It wasn't random. It just didn't happen. And I just got to roll with the punches. It's not just that I have, I have faith so that I don't, I'm not afraid, but I also know that I, there is purpose to my life. And, and part of being um, the person I should be is to be listening for what that purpose is and, and to just stay and step. And I, and I do that just in the day to day. I don't think it has to be, you've got to get some great grand vision about this is your purpose. You do it by being faithful in the small things on a day-to-day -day basis and just that accumulates but I agree Jean it's the things you know having um taking care of uh my husband and I taking care of my mom with Alzheimer's as a young she was a young woman we were in our 20s you know and I, here we have uh, my mother in our house she's in diapers she's you know all of this kind of stuff it makes you strong you go with it and you learn stuff and you come through it and you're just like that was okay you know that was okay mm -hmm. and, then, and then you take that with you yeah. yeah, you know, along those lines, um, I was thinking about, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this concept of like, you know, what's the gift here? What's the silver lining? And, you know, I, I mentioned my own, you know, for our family, a, a personal silver lining. But I think um, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, well, you know, collectively, there's, a, there's something here for us, right? Collectively as humanity to to gain to grow from it, it's it was necessary right this is all necessary because i think there's something missing from a spiritual standpoint you know collectively humanity and i think all the pain that we're experiencing is, ne is necessary and i wasn't quite sure and i'm not you know I'm not sure exactly what is the purpose or what the outcome but i think in my mind um i think that or let one of our lessons anyway, is despite all of the differences in opinion and what people think that our lesson, especially, you know, like from a Christian standpoint is to be able to love 
the people that disagree with you is to be yeah. able to truly be compassionate and empathetic and um, understanding that everybody has had different experiences. And you know, we don't have to agree with it. We can certainly fight like hell, like we do to on principles, you know, our yeah. rights on, on principles. principles. And, and really, and I think, you know, you would agree with me on this um, for our fellow human beings, you know, because of what we know and what we are aware of. But, you know, I think in the challenge for me, I'll just be honest with you, the challenge for me, because it's easier for me to want to hate somebody who wants to force me to get a vaccine, for instance, right? It, it would be easy for me to do that. Um, that's the default. And, but the, the, I think the spiritual lesson here is to be able to step back and say, you know what? I know this person wants me to do something that makes no sense. There's no logic behind it, but I still need to be in a place of knowing that we're all really come from the same place. You know, they're a child of God, just like you are. And even though they're antagonistic to what your, you know, worldview is, or, or even, you know, the safety of my family. Right. Um, I think for me, that's, for me, that's a lesson, I think, in, in this whole thing, anyway. Yeah. Zach Bush talks a lot about how viruses are, um, they just are tools for evolution and how they have been from, from the beginning of time essential for the adaptation of species. And if it weren't for viruses, you know, mammals wouldn't exist because they're, some viruses are very important for creating, you know, the placenta for mammals. And he gives tons of examples. Is that video is called the virome. So definitely check it out. But it makes me think about, you know, this COVID-19 virus and how it's what, like you're saying, Dr. Jean, like it's maybe it's what the world needs and it can be a painful growing pain, but, um, there's a lot, the world's a completely different place with environmental toxins and whatnot. And it's almost like a, an upgrade to our systems. If we allow it to be, it can make us stronger. In it's kind of interesting. And uh, the sense of just shifting at a, at a different level of consciousness as well. Yeah. It's interesting because, um, you know, Lyme disease is a, is a gain to function as we know it. Lyme disease today is is a gain to function. It was a bioweapon, and I mean it's devastating. You know uh, some of the effects on people's lives. I mean complete ruination. And I remember um, the guy, the uh, compound pharmacist Ted Keller, who actually um, started making the acetyl glutathione in his kitchen a couple of uh, about twenty years ago, and who we get our acetyl glutathione from. Anyway, years ago I was talking to him on the phone about Lyme disease, and he said this. This, this, this uh, disease is like out of the pit of hell. And he said, I think the only way they, they're gonna be able to eradicate it, and it just made me think of this because of what you said, Allison, about the viruses, is to create a virus that could destroy it. And I thought that that was so, you know, of course that's not been done and, you know, I don't know, but, but I just thought that that was an interesting perspective. You need to, to come up with something that now is more powerful them on that yeah. note I'd, I'd just quickly mention this and again we're you know we're kind of talking about spiritual and consciousness and how that connects to health you know when in our practice we can kind of tease out underlying things that are causing stress to a body and you know it's very typical for you know these people with hypothyroid to have a viral component right and in typically in the medical world what we'll do is we'll say oh the virus caused this problem. But what if the virus didn't cause the problem, but the virus is just shows up secondarily to the problem? Right. It's was there. It you, was it you find, Yeah, exactly. You find the problem yeah. there, but you automatically make an assumption that the virus caused the problem. Maybe not. Maybe the virus is just part of this process. And it's so interesting because when you look at different parts of the body, it's it's in the in the thyroid, it's always viral, sometimes fungal, but 95% of the time it's gonna be viral. In the liver, you're going to find bacterial stuff mostly. Um, you know, in different parts of the of body, we you know, like in the in the prostate for men, we find fungal stuff. So it's it's like certain areas of the body seem to attract certain immune challenges. Not that the immune challenges are the are the thing; they're secondary. Almost like with people with cancer, like almost all. I I, I can't think of anyone in the years of my practice who had cancer that didn't have a fungal component there. 
is the mm-hmm. fungus causing the cancer? Is the cancer cancer causing the fungus? We don't know that, right? But we but these things are interesting how they show up. Again, in our westernized culture, we automatically blame the bug. Oh my gosh, this is what's causing this problem. Maybe not. I'll give another example of that. Exact same kind of analogy. So the only people that you can really connect high cholesterol with and heart attack is about 5% of the population. And that's in men in their thirties and forties. Okay. So men in their, in that age group, they're, you know, building their careers, they're building their families. They are under very high stress. The uh, adrenal glands require cholesterol to make the stress hormones to deal with the stress. So then they go, this person had a heart attack, but look, they had high cholesterol at the same time. And then they say, it must have been the cholesterol that caused the heart attack. And it's like, no, it was the stress that caused the heart attack. The high cholesterol shows the body's adaptation to helping that person deal with stress. So um, that's, I mean, that's exactly what you were just saying. It's right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah the cholesterol yeah. is secondary to stress, stress on the liver, stress on the body. It's a, it's a natural adaptive response. And of course, how do they how do they lower that? You know, just to put a little plug in, what do they they give you a statin that basically kills the liver, right? So it doesn't yeah. produce cholesterol anymore. And it also takes the energy away from your heart by stopping the production of mitochondrial uh, energy boosting CoQ10 in the liver. So uh, what we see is we see higher cholesterol. We see high cholesterol in thyroid problems, right? Because thyroid uh, cholesterol is very important for uh, the, the conversion of T4 to T3 that the, bo- that the body can use, it used to be called the poor man's thyroid test. Um, so, so that's just, it's like, you know, it, it, oh, we see the high cholesterol there. So it must have been the cholesterol that caused this problem. These are all the uh, correlation does not equal causation kind of things. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Interesting. There's a quote here. I like this quote by Albert Einstein. Everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. By Albert Einstein. This is what you think becomes reality. You project that and that is the energy and then the other, the same energy attracts. Yeah, and the, back to that proverb I was saying: "As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is." Mm-hmm. When I when I'm doing our, when we do our consultations, you know, so it's like an hour long kind of kind of hour, or at least an hour. Um, one of the questions I ask on my questionnaire is, you know, what do you see for yourself in the future? I want to know not just what you don't want. I don't want weight. I don't want pain. I don't want bloating. I don't want digestive issues. I don't want you know. That's what everybody yeah. doesn't want. I always want to know what people do want. So if you did have less pain and you were at your ideal weight and you had all the energy you needed and you had, you know, all these physical symptoms that you've got were gone, then who would you be? What would be different about your life? <clears throat> what would you do differently? I mean, would you just do the same things you're doing or would this lead to something else? Would you play more? Would you be, um, you know, interact with your family in a, in, a, in a better way? Like, what is it that you envision for yourself? And I really try to stress, like, I, I want each person that we work with to have that vision for themselves mm-hmm. so that we have something that we're going for and not just, because it's amazing. You probably have experienced this too. Like you work with somebody and they have a bunch of symptoms. And when you do, you'll ask them like, well, how's it going? Well, I don't know, you know, pretty good. And then we'll go over and look at their, you know, their paperwork on the symptoms they had and how they've changed. It's like, well, what about the headaches that you've had? Oh yeah, yeah, I haven't had those anymore. What about the uh, bloating? Hey, you know, I haven't had that either. And like all these symptoms go away, but if there isn't, you know, that it doesn't mean anything. Once the symptoms gone, it's like out of mind. They don't even think about it anymore. Like it was an issue. Um, but there's, but if we don't have a place we're going to like an improvement in how we operate in our lives, then it really is meaningless, you know, in my experience. That's great. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to start asking that Dr. Jean. <laughs> Thanks. I like and I, that. And I, what I do, I say, you know, I say, well, here's what I want you to do. Here's your homework. Whether we, whether we work together or not, here's your homework. Yeah. Go write these things down and put them on your bathroom mirror so you can look at them every day. And I always, I use the example of like several years ago, probably seven or eight years ago, we were in Atlanta still. And 
Uh, we got out a bunch of stacks and stacks of magazines. We went to the dumpsters and got, you know, stacks of different magazines. And we went through and cut out all these things and made a vision board and, you know, fireplaces and different things like that. And um, we, a few months back, we were just kind of going, digging through stuff and cleaning up. And I was like, oh, here's our vision board. And we looked at it. And I was like, oh my gosh, everything came true, you know? So um, I think having a vision Again, when we get into like, you know, since we're in sort of like the health care sort of realm here and, and people come to us with health challenges mostly, um, I think it's an important aspect to, to, to have on the table too, not just what your symptoms are and what you want to get rid of, but really what, what are you going to become? What's going to be different about your life? What's your purpose? Like, what are you here to do? Like Becky said, you have a purpose. Like, what are you here to do? And can you do it the best when you don't have energy and you don't feel good and you're in pain, or could you do that better when you are feeling your best? And what is that for you? Like, what do you want to do? What do you want to contribute in this world? And I really you think, wanna, you know, I'm you want to flourish. You want to, like, I feel that at this point in my life, I am flourishing, you know, all the things I love to do music, all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's just wonderful. And it, it is a feeling of, it gives a great feeling of joy and satisfaction. You just feel like you're living an abundant life. And, uh, you know, all of this stuff going on, it, it can't take that away from me. It just can't. You know? um, and I think that that is uh, something I just wish I could just pass on to anybody I saw, you know, just get that. And that's the thing, too. You were talking about, Allison, earlier, the paperwork and stuff. So I, I will come in. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I got to order stuff. Then I got to do this. And we've got order. We've got that kind of thing. But once it's time for an appointment and that door closes and I'm with that person, I am so relaxed yeah. and just boom, because that person has my full attention and I enjoy people. I, my life is so rich with people. I think about it. I'm like, oh my goodness. I know, you know, so many wonderful people from, you know, whatever realm and, uh, I, I, I get that. And that, that's when, you know, I don't know, you just feel that bubble of like, wow, this is, this is what living is. This is what life is all about. Yeah. yeah. You know, aside from the, um, logistical, you know, running of a business, which I have to do because I'm the owner. Right. <clears throat> and that's, you know, there's plenty of time spent on that kind of stuff, but my two major functions from a clinical perspective are, like you to meet with a person and to really go through their history and talk with them and find out what makes them tick. And, and that's one of my favorite parts because, you know, you really get to connect with people on that level and see, you know, see what they're about. And, and it does, it's just, you know, I think really, um, I think you have to have a million relationships, but I think we're here really, it's all about relationship in one way or the other, right? Like whether it's close, close relationships or relationships with other people. And the other is that I get to do exams and I get to explore and see what I find, but they're really two, they're two of my favorite things because I have so much fun in a way in each of them, even though some, you know, sometimes it can be hard. They're still very fulfilling. And so I always yeah. feel like very blessed that I have like these purposes that, you know, that I can pursue in my life to be able to contribute even like with the, you know, like this thing, I don't know if you saw like it, but I know Becky, you know, we're talking about the, COVID Chronicles, the Corvid Chronicles that I did. And like all these songs like were just downloaded through me. Like they were written and, and I just was like, okay, I got, I got a bunch of songs here. What, what am I gonna do with these things? I don't know. I, well, I guess I need to share them because I guess what else you know can you do? Yeah. And so- I wanna and, say I, on that note, <laughs> Dr. G is going to be doing his Corvid Chronicle songs live on my radio program tomorrow at noon. They are magnificent. I absolutely, I, I've listened through the whole thing twice. I mean, you, I actually like taking my shower. I blared it, you know, I'm like, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, you, you're just so real and you, you exude, you know, just, you're, you're just so, um, what do I want to, I say real, what do I want to say? You're just so you. And what you have to say is, uh, well, it really resounds with me. But you're also a very gifted um, singer and guitarist, and uh, I don't know how great the sound will be in the in the studio, but we've done some other live stuff in there, and and I, I think it'll work out fine. Um, it'll be whatever it is, right? <clears throat> I'll be there. I'm going to be tuning in. Yeah, it's going to be great. Awesome. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm excited. But anyway, I think, you know, the whole point of this conversation in my mind was that I think, and again, I talk to it like when I do webinars and I always mention this and it's like, I think it's important for us all to have a purpose and it might just be, and I want to say it like just be, but it might be that you're a mother and that is your purpose is to raise beautiful, amazing children or mm -hmm. that you're Becky Montrone and your purpose is to help people figure out, you know, ways to better their health or, you know, whatever it is. I think it's really important if I would, I would think for myself, if I didn't have any purpose in life that all these stresses that are going on would be even more challenging, you know, like, um, I don't know. I feel like it, you know, no matter what happens, if you're on course and on purpose, it doesn't matter. Like, even if I died, if I died doing what I was supposed to be doing or, or making a contribution, then I feel like that was a life that was worth living, you know? So, um, I think that's a part of, you know, like, Again, went from a holistic viewpoint, when you're looking at everybody, you're looking at their energy. And I'm sure, you know, it all shows up in different ways. Like it'll show up as a biochemical imbalance. If somebody's not on purpose, Allison, it probably shows up as their energy is blocked too, right? I would imagine, yeah. you know, from, a, from an acupuncture standpoint. But um, and I'd like to say too, people's purpose changes. Like I was a stay-at-home mom and I did a, I did a medical transcription business out of my house and I could do things change, you know? So per, I think the ultimate purpose never changes, but sometimes what your purpose at this stage of life is, is different. And, uh, you know, now I'm at the point in life where I can just throw all of my energy into, into what I'm doing here and, in, in, you know, at Wondrous Roots and, and uh, but I think that there is also the beauty of that too, the changing of seasons in life and really embracing that and being really happy when you can, you know, I love being home and planning meals and doing all of that and gardening, and, you know, stuff like that. I loved it. Um, so I think that that's the richness of life too, is enjoying the variety. And, and as time, and as time moves on, that provides different opportunities. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, any given moment, I have a number of purposes going on in my life, honestly, like, you know, my number one purpose, you know, if I had to like put them in order of most importance, my number one, you know, most important purpose is, is my children, you know, and, and being there for them and, and providing an environment so that they can thrive and then that they can then give their gifts and, and their purpose to the world as well. Um, but I, you know, I have a purpose in my clinical, you know, in, in the office and in this stuff and in sharing um, this message with people so that it can give them hope and, and, and ultimately create a shift in humanity. Because I think if, if everybody was on the same page here, like it would, it would just be such a huge shift in suffering and the amount of suffering that people have, like people could really, as a, hu as a human race, we could just explode as far as um, the creativity and, and the advancement that we, that that's possible, I think if we weren't all struggling with the survival and trying to like just tamp down our symptoms with medications and stuff. And, um, you know, I have a purpose in music. Like, I don't, I don't even know what the purpose is, but I know that I have to do it. You know, mm -hmm. like I have to write, I have to keep writing songs. It's like sort of like my journey. Like there's a, I don't know what it is, but I have to do it's it. Compulsion. There's a purpose it's a there. compulsion. It's a compulsion. It's a compulsion. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, you know, again, it's changed over my life and I expect that, you know, as my life continues, things will change. And, I, and I've been in the point of my life where I was like, oh my gosh, my hands are hurting too bad. I can't even play guitar anymore. What else can I do? You know, like I've been faced with the, the possibility of not being able to, to fulfill those purposes and have to move on to something else. But I, I'm pretty sure that as long as I'm on this planet, that I'm always going to have something that's going to drive me um, that's beyond myself. You know, that's not about me. And I don't know, you think you get to a point, it's like, okay, I think when you're, you know, like as you're developing, right, you know, you're, you're going through your childhood and your teenage years and it's a lot about your ego and stuff and what you can accomplish. And, um, and then it starts to become more like, you know, what can you give? Like, what's the purpose of life? Love, what, you know, to give it away, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I mean, even if you're out seeking love, you're, you're not, you know, you're still in lack. It's when you then emit and, and just love comes out of you that that's what the real purpose is and then you have more love than you could imagine coming back to you 
Yeah, so. that's true. I have to give this one example, and this is um, uh, just this past week, one of my very, very best friends um, who is of the same faith that I am, um, she uh, found out that her colon cancer has metastasized to the spine. And her oncologist uh, gave her this news uh, two mornings ago. And he said, um, uh, what he said to her, you know, are you a Christian kind of thing? And she said, yes. He said, because I, I noticed that when I give this type of news, like a few months from his perspective, um, to people who are Christians, they have a totally different reaction than other people. And she said, um, you know, well, what, you know, do you believe in God and stuff? And he said, I know there's something else. He said, I know there's something else. And it's a demonstration that that peace that comes from people who understand even when being faced with um, something, some really dire news uh, that you can't fake that. I mean, it's just that grounded sort of confidence in spite of, I mean, I mean, she was weeping afterwards. She called me on the phone. I mean, it's not like this was great news. She has a 16 year old daughter and she is, um, her husband has passed away. So she's a single mom. So this is not good news, but just for, even for the physician to say, I notice this in my practice. I notice when people get really bad news, which I'm sure an oncologist has to give very, very often. Um, I see a difference in people who have a spiritual grounding and their ability to, to face this. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What a great lesson for the, for the doctor too. If, if there he's, he or she is constantly mm -hmm. seeing this over and over, yeah. you know, again, he might not be there yet, but it's certainly like, wow. Well, that's what he here? was saying. That's what he yeah. was saying. He was saying, this is what I've noticed. I've already noticed this. It's just something I yeah. see. Pretty cool. Yeah. Amazing. Good topic. Thanks, Dr. Jean. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Jean. Yeah. I feel like there's so many wormholes here. We could probably talk for hours. I'm like, what do I, I, know. Where do I go next with this? <laughs> but I think, you know, you know, just from a, like really just bringing it back to like the biochemical realm, you know, like you were saying earlier, Becky, um, certainly there's, a, there's the quantum aspect of our thoughts create our reality, right? And there's the biochemical reality of negative stress thoughts create a chemistry that creates sickness in our body. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Your body, um, if you're negative, if you're angry all the time, if you're, and again, it's not like anger as the emotion, like it comes out and it's gone, but that thought process of I'm angry at so-and-so for mm -hmm. five years or 10 years, this creates and manifests biochemically in your body and it will deteriorate your health. There's no question about that. Right? Bitterness. And, and sometimes it's even under the surface, right? And this is where, you know, beyond the biochemical help that you might get from me or, you know, any of these practitioners here or the energy, sometimes there needs to be some exploration into the past and the traumas and, and do some healing work. In other words, and healing to me is not, you know, it means just exploring and facing up to what was and, and being able to, instead of just pushing it down and I don't want to deal with it, like bringing it out to the surface and saying, okay, I see it and there it is. So I think it's an important part of healing no matter who you work with um, that you consider all the aspects and, and understand that it, you know a, a true holistic view isn't just about natural products. It's about looking at the big picture of life. And you know part of that is your spirituality and your contribution and your traumas in the past. And, um, you know, just remember that with the greatest traumas, because a lot of people that have had a lot of trauma don't want, like, oh, I, just, I don't want to ever go there again, but with the greatest trauma comes the greatest gifts as well and the greatest growth. So, nice. Listen to this one proverb though. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Oh, I'm going to have to like, ponder that one. I'm going to have to ponder that one. A broken spirit, what you just said, a broken spirit, bitterness, unforgiveness, that kind of thing, it affects your physical health, dries up the bones. Okay. Yeah. So this is just, this is another proverb. And it's just like a joyful heart is good medicine. It does amazing things for you. 
um, yeah. throughout. And then, but if you are bitter and if you have anger and unforgiveness, and this goes on and on and on, it will, it will definitely um, impact physical health. And that's not to imply that people who are ill, it's because they're bitter and angry and they've got problems that way. We're in a talk, we've got a lot of things going on. But, um, but, but having that joyful heart and having that present living, living in the present, living in a day-to-day -day joyful, uh, confident manner, I mean, is going to not harm your health and it's going to help it. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, and it's definitely not just one thing. It's, you know, there are many aspects to, yeah. you know, our body's pretty amazing. It can deal with a lot. Um, but all these things matter is the point. And, and even if you think about it, you know, again, we tend, we tend to judge our experiences as negative or positive. Um, but like, if you never, if you never felt pain, you could never know compassion, right? You have to, like, to some extent, we have to experience some of these things in order to then fully, you know, realize our humanity, right? Like, you have to experience some pain or you never, or how would you know what other people experience? How could you, you know, do that? So um, you just don't want to be stuck in it as well at some point or, or subconsciously stuck in it. And, you know, it's running your life and running how things go, but you don't even know it's happening. So I think it's, you know, I just think it's important to explore a truly holistic approach to your life um, and that includes, you know, your spirituality, your mental, emotional state, what you eat, handling your stress, um, you know, having fitness, all these things matter. And, um, yeah. Your belief system and the thoughts that you tell yourself all the time in your subconscious mind, they make a really, really big difference um, mm -hmm. to, your, to your health mentally and physically. So yeah, sometimes you got to get in there and rewrite the script a little bit. And then all That's the right. other things that you do are going to work a lot more effectively. All right. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation you. today. That was really great. Yeah. And um, great seeing you both. And all of you who have joined us, uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to hear Jean live, oh, Jean also though, I'll be putting your, the, uh, the YouTube on my newsletter. So people are also going to be able to get your original too. Um, okay, tomorrow. cool. Okay. Do you have the, so link, do you have the links to the lyrics? Do you have that? I know I can get them because you talk about them and I think I can see them on the YouTube, right? Yeah. I think they're on there, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah well, you said they are in the comments section, yeah. yeah. All right, all right so, cool. yeah, so, all right, wonderful. All of you awesome. have a great Friday. And well, we'll see you today is what? It's uh, it's a long month, right? So there's gonna be, we're on the first, first and, and third, third, so I think it's gonna be three weeks, right? Is that three right? Three weeks, yeah. It's gonna be three weeks till our next session, which will be, um, whatever early i think i'm out of town actually, that week. i don't think uh, i'll be joining so it'll be um november so at fifth it looks like november yeah, 5th yeah all right i may be out of town so i may be join i if i can i'll join you from afar but you may all right. not have me so all right everyone thank all you right. so much for being here we totally appreciate it and and um i love you guys Love you too. All right. Okay. All right. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.